Hello everyone. Second round table conference. Members of the Indian Liberal Party such as Tej Bahadur, Safro, Asiwai, Sindhamani and Srinivasa Sastri appealed to Gandhi to talk with the Viceroy. Gandhi and Irwin reached a compromise which came to be called the Gandhi Irwin Pact, the Delhi Pact. The second round table conference was held in London from September 7, 1931 to December 1, 1931. The Indian National Congress nominated Gandhi as its sole representative. A. Rangasami Ayangar and Madan Mohan Malavia were also there. There were a large number of Indian participants beside the Congress. The princely states were represented by Maharaja of Alwar, Maharaja of Baroda, Nawab of Bhopal, Maharaja of Bikanar, Maharaj of Kutch, Rana of Dolpur, Maharaja of Indore, Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir, Maharaja of Kapurthala, Maharaja of Navanagar, Maharaja of Patiala, Maharaja of Reva, Chief Sahib of Sangli, Raja of Sarila, Sir Prabha Shankar Patni, Bhavnagar, Manubai Mehta Baroda, Sardar Sahib Zada Sultan Ahmed Khan Gwalier, Sir Muhammad Akbar Hyderi Hyderabad, Mirza Ismail Mysore, Colonel K. N. Haksar Jamon Kashmir, T. Raghavaya Travancore, Diyakat Hayat Khan Patiala, the Muslims were represented by Aga Khan III, Maulana Shaukat Ali, Muhammad Ali Jannah, A.K. Fazlul Huk, Muhammad Iqbal, Muhammad Shafi, Muhammad Jafarullah Khan, Sayyid Ali Imam, Maulvi Muhammad Shafi Daudi, Raja Shair Muhammad Khan of Domeli, A.H. Bosnavi Hafiz Hidayat Hussain, Sayyid Muhammad Parcha Sahib Bahadur, Dr. Shafa Ahmad Khan, Jamal Muhammad and Nawab Sahib Jada Sayyid Muhammad Mir Shah. Hindus were represented by M.R. Jayakar B.S. Munji and Divan Bahadur Raja Narendra Nath. The Liberals at the conference were Jayan Basu C.Y. Sindhamani, Tej Bahadur Sapru, V.S. Srinivasa Sastri and Simanlal Harilal Setalwad, the Justice Party sent Raja of Bobli, Arkad Ramasami Mudaliyar, Sir A.P. Patro and Bhaskar Rao Vitojji Rao Rajadav. The depressed class were represented by B.R. Ambedkar and Ratamalai Srinivasan. Sardar Ojal Singh and Sardar Sampuran Singh represented the Sikhs. The Parsis were represented by Kawasni Jahangir, Homi Modi and Firoz Setna. Indian Christians were represented by Surendra Kumar Datta and A.T. Panir Salvam. Industry was represented by Ganshyam Das Birla, Sir Purushottam Das Thakur Das and Manakji Dada Boy. Labor was represented by N.M. Joshi, B. Shiva Rao, and B.V. Giri. The representatives of Indian women were Sarojini Naidu, Begum, Jahanara, Shana Vas, and Radha Bai Subrayan. The universities were represented by Syed Sultan Ahmed and Bisheshwar Dayal Seth. The representatives of Burma and from the provinces of Sin, Assam, Central Provinces and the NWFP also attended. The Government of India was represented by C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer, Narendra Nath Law and M. Ramachandra Rao. Not much was expected from the conference because of the following reasons. By this time, Lord Irwin had been replaced by Lord Willingdon as Viceroy in India. Just before the conference began, the Labour government in India, England had been replaced by a national government which was an uneasy coalition between Labour and Conservatives. The British were also angered by the increased revolutionary activities which had claimed many European lives in India. The right-wing or Conservatives in Britain led by Churchill strongly objected to the British government negotiating with the Congress on an equal basis. They instead demanded a strong government in India. The Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald headed the conservative-dominated cabinet with a weak and reactionary Secretary of State for India, Samuel Hoare. At the conference, Gandhi and therefore the Congress claimed to represent all the people of India against imperialism. 
The other delegates, however, did not share this view. Historians point out that many of the delegates were conservative government loyalists and communalists and these groups were used by the colonial government to neutralize the efforts of Gandhi. Because of the participation of a large number of groups, the British government claimed that the Congress did not represent the interests of all of India. Gandhi pointed out, out that there was a need of a partnership between Britain and India on the basis of equality. He put forward the demand for the immediate establishment of, for, of a responsible government at the centre as well as in the provinces. He also reiterated that the Congress alone represented political India, saying that the untouchables were Hindus and thus not to be treated as a minority, he discarded the idea of a separate electorate for them. He also said there was no need for separate electorates or special scapegoats for Muslims or other minorities. Many of other delegates disagreed with Gandhi. The session soon got deadlock on the question of the minorities. Separate electorates were being demanded by the Muslims, depressed classes, Christians and Anglo-Indians. All these came together in a minorities pact. Gandhi found desperately against this concerted move to make all constitutional progress conditional on the solving of this issue. The princes were not also not too enthusiastic about a federation, especially after the possibility of the formation of a Congress government at the centre had receded after the suspension of civil disobedience movement. Outcome The lack of agreement among the many delegate groups meant that no substantial results regarding India's constitutional future would come out of the conference. The session ended with McDonald's announcement of two Muslim majority provinces, Northwest Frontier Province and Sindh, the setting up of an Indian consultative committee, setting up of three expert committees, finance, franchise and states, and the prospect of a unilateral British communal award if Indians fail to agree. The government refused to concede the basic Indian demand of freedom. Gandhi returned to India on December 28, 1931. Like, share and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you. Bye.